Um, the great Brexit-hating bureaucratic group thinking International Monetary Fund has revealed some statistics that it must have found rather painful. The United Kingdom's real GDP has outgrown all European major players since 2010. France, Germany, Spain, and Italy. Real GDP is GDP after stripping out inflation. The Romaniac class is intent on convincing you that Brexit has been a disaster, but this is demonstrably untrue. Everything from free trade deals to the Trans-Pacific Partnership to an booming post-Brexit herring industry disproves this. There's no question we can do more. We must pursue a pro-growth agenda. We must explore our own gas and oil. We must push back, delay our net zero ambitions and we ought to reverse the corporation tax rise. And incidentally, the former Prime Minister, Liz Truss, launched her growth commission today. And GB News' very own business and economics editor, Liam Halligan, was there with her this afternoon. And Liam, you join me now. Um, how did this commission go and uh, what are the key points you brought out of the um, presentation today? Well, former Prime Minister Liz Truss has been keeping an assiduously low profile since last September's mini-budget, which, of course, saw financial markets react badly to her proposals, then-Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng's proposals, to freeze taxation rather than raise taxation to try and get their arms around spending and make the state a little smaller. But what she's done now, she's convened a growth commission, a dozen or so pretty high-profile international economists from the UK, US, Japan, India, Latin America as well. She was at the launch of this growth commission this morning. She didn't say much. She let the economists on the stage do the talking. But what they're trying to do, they're trying to reconvene and the ideas that are traditionally associated with the Tory centre-right. High growth, low taxation, supply-side reform. She didn't give any interviews except to me and to GB News. She just said, after the Commission, why the Growth Commission itself needs to be convened. Here she is, Jacob. Well, what we've seen for decades is low economic growth. And what that means is people are worse off than they need to be. Uh, today's report shows that they are £10,000 worth off in terms of spending power than people in the United States. And it's, of course, vital that families are able to keep more of their own money, they're able to earn more money to help deal with the inevitable difficulties in life, whether it's inflation, whether it's needing to buy a new car, you know, having that extra growth is vitally important. So what this commission is looking at is what are the policies needed to get that? And this is fundamental because we've had no productivity growth in 30 years. Supply side reforms, deregulation, we were going in exactly the opposite way because um, the EU is all about more and more regulation. How are we going to break out of this? Are people going to take notice of this commission? Well, I certainly hope so, because the ideas that this commission are putting forward of low tax, supply side reform, efficiency in the public and private sector are tested throughout history for broadening prosperity, increasing the size of the pie. So there's more for everybody to go round. And it strikes me that while Liz Truss is derided in lots of quarters, the fact is that even though we've since her administration had the so-called adults in charge, the grown-ups back in the room, Rishi Sunak uh, and Jeremy Hunt. Borrowing costs now for the government are considerably higher than they were at the height of the so-called panic around the time of the mini-budget back in September. So at the moment, we've got the low-growth policies, that increase in corporation tax from 19 to 25% that you alluded to, the freezing of tax thresholds, pulling more and more middle-income people into the top rate of tax, taking more people's money away from them so they can't spend it themselves, so the state can spend it. We've got these Hunt-Sunak policies. We've got the slow-growth policies, but the fiscal situation is worse than it was now under Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng. So I do think, despite the fact that her administration was so short, she has at least given herself permission to be heard. I think that's right, but I also think you have to acknowledge that getting from here to there will be painful, that when we had the Thatcher revolution, we had to reduce the size of the state. The state's got, what, to 47% of GDP. That is too high, it's bloated, and therefore we need cuts to allow for the tax reductions. We can't just have tax reductions and the devil take the hindmost, can we? 
I think you're right, Jacob. Before COVID lockdown, the state was typically 38, 39, 40 percent of GDP. It rocketed to 52 percent of GDP during that 2020 lockdown year. But rather than coming back to where it's traditionally been in the UK, it's stuck at about 45, 46, 47 percent, as if the state has grabbed an extra five percentage points of the economy and won't let go. We will need to tackle vested interests. If you want to take an example, for instance, we need to build more houses. That gets growth going. There hasn't been a, a major economic recovery in this country that hasn't been associated with a big increase in house building. And yet house building is now on its knees. That will upset lots of vested interests. We also need to, as you say, cut back the size of the state, which is always a very difficult thing to do. Well, it's become more expensive and less efficient. That if you look at productivity uh, in the public sector, it is lower now than it was in 1997, mm -hmm. in spite of the introduction of modern technologies, of... Email, uh, communications, uh, Zoom. <laughs> uh, 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 online renewals yeah, of yeah. Um, documents and so on. It's worse than in 1997. And we've got to tackle that, which there's no appetite to do, as far as I can tell. I think it's worth saying, and the economists on the panel today, who included Doug McWilliams, who used to be chief economist of both IBM and the CBI, included Shankar Singham, who's one of the world's leading trade experts, advised governments on both sides of the Atlantic. What they were saying is that we do need to tackle productivity, but this isn't just a UK problem. It's across mainland Europe as well, and even parts of the US where growth has been slow, not least since the global financial crisis. A lot of this, Jacob, is the overhang from the global financial crisis, all the crazy amounts of money that we printed since then, and indeed followed by lockdown. So it's not just a British disease, but Britain should surely be at the forefront of coming up with a, a new or a renewed economic paradigm of a smaller state, lower taxation. Because after all, what I was thinking, and I was up on the stage today with those economists chairing the, the press conference, if you like, I was thinking that even though to many journalists and even some parliamentarians, even in your party, what they were saying would seem a bit radical, what they're actually talking about is policies that the silent majority of British voters, I would say, agree with. The people that run small businesses, the people that want a state that taxes people and is decent and provides minimum levels of social security, but isn't overbearing and too onerous. And I think a lot of people feel that's not where we now are. That it's gone too far. It needs to be pulled back. The UK needs uh, to lead the way. And we need the deregulatory agenda that allows people to get on with their lives so they can be prosperous. I think that's right. It doesn't sound like a very fashionable argument, but actually it's an argument that's won through throughout history. And I know, for instance, an awful lot of young people I talk to write to me, my role at The Telegraph and at GB News, they don't like all this high taxation. They don't like all these vested interests that are stopping houses being built. They don't necessarily like the fact that electricity is so expensive, because so they can't of, charge their indeed, smartphones. Because of the net, net zero agenda. Well,